Well, welcome everybody to another edition of WB 2013 as we've now exited payback and now are on the road to money in the bank. But before we get to Raw, let's start out with a quick little overview of my Patreon. So yeah, um, for those of you who don't watch the other series, uh, as a quick explanation, I'll include time spans in case you've already seen this before. Uh, or you just don't care to get to the actual video, get to the actual TW part of this video, but regardless, um, you know, I'm doing this basically to see, you know, if people want to give me some support about the channel, you know, again, I'm going to continue all my series regardless, um, just this is just something extra in case people want to do it, and if you don't, you know, no big deal, I'll, you know, um, but, you know, just... You know, this is just something extra, just in case. So to go over the levels, you know, uh, real quick, like we for one dollar a month, you know, just get your you get my sense of your thanks report, and you get listed on the description of every YouTube video. And like I said, some actual you know thumbs up, thanks for me. Uh, Five dollars a month, you get uh see videos live before go on the YouTube's. Um, that could be you know a week before or like six hours before, it just depends on when I get videos done. Uh, become part of the booking team via Patreon voting. You know, if, I, if I'm if I'm conflicted on a choice or if I just want something random uh, for one of my series, you know, you get to choose that and you get to access the game databases every three months in game. So, you know, for instance, with this, um, the July, beginning of July database for this series will be up in basically a little bit. Um, you know, basically probably right after I post this because then I'll be the end of June. Uh, at 750 a month, you get all that. Plus, you get uh, booking sheets, random writing, basically, like, at the moment, uh, I have, like, basically, the book, you know, a look into the booking team via the observer from the game world of my WCW 2004 series, and I'll do other random writing like that, writing like that for all my other series, and also, at the 750 level, you can add a character to, to one of the series, again, you won't be able to, like, put in a pro card angle, or some superstar top level restore right away, but as long as you're a, um, you know, you're a, um, you know, as, as long as you put your money, you know, as long as you continue to pledge, you know, your, your monthly amount, I'll give updates on that character and how they're doing um, in the game world and see how all they advance. At 10 bucks a month, you get all that, plus um, you get the access to the game database every month. And uh, if you, uh, you know, pledge for six months, I'll do a pilot series where I'll do a four to six episode pilot series of your choice. Obviously, it has to be a mod that I can actually, you know, find. And then I'll see if it's a hit with a wider YouTube audience. And that $25 per month, you also uh, get everything, like I said, then you get, get to choose a storyline or a signing for a series per month. And also, if you uh, support for two months, that's $25 level, you get two months support. And of course, if you're a crazy person and plus $250 per month, you can do whatever the hell you want. But again, like, this isn't necessary. I'll be continue to do this because I enjoy playing TW, obviously, but this is just something extra if people want to add. Uh, but yeah, just follow the link in the description if you want to do it, And but that's it. Now we're on to actually Raw from Grand Rapids, Michigan, the night after Payback, and we start out off with Payback highlights, you know, including Cena winning big, um, you know, Ziggler retaining the title, and everything else that happened, as then we go to our, which, you know, highlights, which gets a 72, and then we move on to our Raw intro, which gets a, also a 72, and then we have, you know, the show start out with no chance in hell, and out comes Mr. McMahon. He goes over, you know, what happened last night at um, Payback, and he brings, you know, has John Cena and Dolph Ziggler both come out. You know, they both blurry, look a little bit blurry because, you know, it's it's events. And he answers, you know, pay, Money in the Bank is a big event, and it'll be two big matches. You know, they'll give two men the, sh the shot at your at your championship anytime they choose. But a big show like Money in the Bank needs a big main event. And what's a bigger main event than the WWE champion taking on the world heavyweight champion at Money in the Bank. So yeah, basically, um, Vince makes the match, you know, and he says, you know, it's not going to be title, you know, but it's not, not going to be championship for champion, but you determine who is the better champion. Since, you know, you guys have gotten along so much, so well the past few weeks, it's only fair you have a nice little competition to decide who is truly better. Uh, then he has to like get some little mic work from Ziggler and Cena. You know, Ziggler says, you know, he has a lot of respect for Cena, but... He's going to prove the future is now, and it's time for somebody like Dolph to rise to the top of WWE and see that you know, because you know he does have the hustle, loans and respect, and he's here. He's here early every day and leaving late, and he's traveling all over the world for the WWE universe. So if Ziggler thinks he can, you know, he can actually defeat him, try him at at Money in the Bank, and so that segment itself gets a ninety six. So good stuff, and it's officially set up for Money in the Bank, our first big match.
is John Cena versus Dolph Ziggler with neither title on the line, but just basically, I'm not going to say bragging rights because that's also a pay-per-view name. But there you go. So again, this gets a 96, setting up the big match, and there you go. Uh, then we go backstage where Vicky is with Airborne and he says, you know, she says she noticed that Kofi Kingston is the United States champion and hasn't defended that title in a while. So tonight on Monday Night Raw, he will defend that title against Ryback. Big peel pop for that, as obviously it looks like Vicky is trying to get a little revenge against Airborne for helping out Horton, uh, for helping out Cena and Ziggler the past couple weeks. As this gets to 54, as it's a little backstage segment. And then we move forward to a little graphic that says, you know, tonight in a, in a rematch uh, from last night for the, for Money in the Bank spot, it'll be Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins. That gets a 56. And then we go to our opening contest of the evening. Or no, first we have Cesaro coming down with the newly freshly turned Tyson Kidd as Cesaro puts over that, you know, Tyson Kidd is season of light and together they're going to dominate the tag team division and prove that true wrestlers can rise to the top in the WWE and they will show their skill in the ring right now. Out comes tons of funk because, you know, the little clash between, you know, the obviously styles clash between sort of the comedy characters of tons of funk and Cesaro and Kit. So this gets a 51, and the actual match itself gets a 55, so not bad. Unfortunately, no good chemistry for Cesaro and Kid, but still, they can still team together. As any about that, these are from the crowd, but Sapa Wrestling, Cesaro and Kid defeat Sons of Funk in 542. When Tyson Kid pins Rose Clay, uh, this gets a 55 overall. Tyson gets a 52, Cesaro gets a 56, Sweet Tea gets a 48, and Rose Clay gets a 30. Straightforward matches, the straightforward squash, you know, uh, Cesaro probably did some power spot with either um, A-Train or Brodus, you know, the Tons of Funk get a little bit of a offense, but eventually, you know, Cesaro and Kid are the better tag team wrestlers and, you know, one could say the better athletes, and they get the big pinfall victory. And afterwards, of course, Cesaro could celebrate to the booze of the crowd, as this also gets a 55. Uh, then we go backstage with the Shield tonight as they put over, you know, they're still the tag, they're still the tag team, sh they're still the unified tag team titles, and nobody can stop the Shield no matter what. You know, tonight's uh, also a night for Seth to, um, to make up for his, you know, his, his failings last night, uh, and sh show that the Shield are on, not only unstoppable together, but unstoppable apart as well. And one, one way or the other, Dan O'Brien will have to face justice. 74, decent promo, and as we move forward. And then we come back for commercial with Fandango dancing to the ring with Summer Rae, which gets a 30, because unfortunately Fandango is not that over yet. And then after that, we've got Fandango defeating Yoshitatsu in a terrible match, which didn't have much heat. I mean, that's just mean to both of them. As this gets a 28, Fandango gets a 43, Yoshitatsu gets a 30, and you know, it's just a straight, straight head squash win for Fandango, you know, I... Tatsu gets a little bit of offense, but at the end, he's Yoshi Tatsu, and Fandango is Fandango, and yeah, just Fandango gets a 43, Tatsu gets a 30, magical crowd down a little, what can you do? And post-match, Fandango celebrates with some Ray to a 42, and just a little squash win uh, to give Fandango some new momentum after he's sort of been lost in the lower, lower card for a little bit. Uh, then we go backstage, where Mark Henry uh, is, you know, backstage still trying to implore Jinder Mahal. He should, you know, change his ways and, and, and follow him and come through and be and say, you know, they're say there's, you know, yes, we know what everybody says about us backstage, but we're still wrestlers. We're still part of the WWE universe and we want to compete. So how about this? Mark Henry, next week, face, face me and Drew points to himself right in that ring and we'll show you that three and B aren't just jokes and mark henry says fine your funeral boy and he walks away as this gets a 51 so decent little thing as we continue this a little segment where henry is trying to talk you know jinder mahal and uh, team up with him by pointing out the absurdity of the other members of 3 and b as this gets a 51 and then we have a quick little squash as Seamus kills Shane Taylor. Well, it says 355, but all the across. This gets a 51. Uh, Taylor gets a little bit of offense, but in the end, Seamus is Seamus. And he just, like, eventually, you know, get, uh, throws around the big man and the big, you know, droppers with the stars tonight and just pins him 1, 2, 3. As a local competition is not much competition, uh, Seamus gets a 77. Shane Taylor gets a 23. You know, again, straightforward little squash win after uh, Seamus, you know, was successful at payback and then he uh takes the mic and says 
Well, you know, that was a little fun. But I've got a real challenge out here. You know, Wade Barrett, last night you were successful defending that Intercontinental title. But I'm talking to you right now. Because I'm a different kind of fight than this. So right now, I'm calling you out. You want to fight? You, you've talked about you want some competition? Well, come face me, fella. And I'll show you some white noise. Uh, 66, decent promo. Seamus is a decent worker. He's decently over. And he's a promo guy. So uh, there you go. Uh, then we go backstage where Randy Orton is with Vicky. And he basically says, you know, tell Vince to come meet me out in that ring as soon as possible or there will be consequences because after last night I deserve more than I'm getting and Vicky you know Vicky's unclear what's going on but then she you know basically tells one of the random underlings there to go find Vince as this gets a 61 as it's just a quick two minute segment and then uh Wow, yeah, this is not good. Uh, Tamina Suka destroys Naomi in 307 by pinfall, the super, supervised splash. You know, Tamina lost last night at Payback, but, you know, she was just more part of the storyline there between AJ Lee and Caitlyn. So just give her a quick win over Naomi. Uh, as Tamina Suka gets a 35, Naomi gets a 32. These women are not that over, unfortunately, but Tamina Suka still gets a squash win and is able to celebrate afterwards to a 40. So, yeah, there you go. I forgot Naomi was not over enough at all. But, you know, not the end of the world. It's a women's match in 2013. Honestly, 30 something is about the right rating. <laughs> you know? Unfortunately. Uh, then we go backstage where Fandango is talking to Vicky and he's saying, you know, he deserves, you know, he's been, you know, ever since WrestleMania, he deserves more. He wants more. Uh, he wants to show off how well, just not great, great of a dancer he is, but also how fantastic uh, a sports entertainer he is in that ring. And uh, Vicky says she kicks out and says okay fine next week on raw you'll have a challenge at fandango and if you win that challenge you'll be in money in the bank fandango and some way basically celebrate as vicky has a smirk on her face as they both leave as this gets a 40. so fandango will face a mystery opponent next week for a shot at, at getting in money in the bank we'll have to see who that is then we have any about that great heat good heat and decent wrestling the shield of Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns run over the Great Cali and our truth on 535 when Dean Ambrose pins. Okay, I forgot to put in a winner here. Oh, well, not the end of the world. Dean Ambrose, it says pins Great Cali, but it was Dean Ambrose pinning our truth with the, with the double arm DDT. This gets a 52, just a quick squash. Like, Great Cali probably doesn't even get in the ring. I mean, if we can have him take a Superman punch from Roman Reigns, that works, but otherwise, you know, he's basically immobile at this point. Um, but our truth gets a 47, Great Collie gets a 37, Reigns gets a 71, and Ambrose gets a 71 as well. Overall, like I said, this is just a straight head squash. And overall, and post match to show their continued domination of the tag team division, and it'll be in a way as a whole. They send our truth through a table easily as this gets a 65. And just, you know, just putting the shield more and more over as, you know, still nobody's actually defeated them in, you know, six man competition. Brian got the win over Rollins, but that's basically been the only real blemish on the record. And then after that, we have our US title match as it's Ryback versus Kofi Kingston. And obviously you can see what this match is like, you know, Kofi is playing the, the mouse and cat game, a cat and mouse game rather. And every time, you know, Ryback gets him, Ryback throws him around. But Kofi, you know, eventually gets, you know, a bit of a baby face fire back and he's able to hit the uh, tr trouble in paradise. But Ryback, you know, basically, you know, doesn't really, he doesn't no sell it, but he doesn't sell it much. And, uh, you know, Kofi does eventually hit a big old dive on, on Ryback on the outside, but even on the outside, Ryback gets the advantage and is able to just lay out Kofi on the outside and roll in the ring before the 10 count and get the win over the U.S. champion by count up. As I said, this gets a 70-66, so decent match considering it's Ryback and Kofi Kingston. Ryback gets a 71, Kofi Kingston gets a 59. And post-match, Kofi, you know, is slowly getting up when Ryback grabs him and he hits a shell shock on Kofi and walks away as the crowd goes as this gets a 70 and looks like, you know, Kofi now has faces a big challenge here in the WWE of Ryback. Then we have our fun little angle continuing the, uh, you know, the storyline from Payback as H.E. Lee is talking to her brother, quote unquote brother, Ryan Lee, you try to convince her that, you know, Caitlyn's, you know, 
never really, you know, he, she set up the whole secret admirer thing. She shouldn't be with her anymore. And Caitlin runs in and says, you know, no, you know, we have something special, Ryan. You know, yes, I know AJ Lee said she had a prank, but I want to give you a chance. Ryan still seems confused. Um, but, you know, eventually he walks away with Caitlin as AJ is very upset and says sort of with a evil smirk, I guess it's going to have to go to plan B. As this gets a 55. Decent little wacky backstage statement as getting to this angle. Then we have our summary main event. As any buff had great heat and good wrestling, Daniel Bryan defeats Seth Rollins in 10 30 30 by pinfall. This gets a 72. And this is just like your, I don't want to say pure spot fest, but this is just a really high impact 10 minute match. As Rollins gets some offense in, but you know, Bryan is looking really good. In the end, he hits the uh, big knee right in the middle of the ring. Uh, you know, shield aren't out on ringside as Brian gets the one, two, three. Brian gets a 77. Seth Rollins gets a 65. And a huge big one for Brian as he gets added to the Money in the Bank match. At, well, Money in the Bank. And post match, Dan Brie comes out to celebrate with her man as that gets a 69. As a crowd cheers and you know, the little graphic shows up, you know, Dan and Brian being the first man in the, eventually in the Money in the Bank. Then, well, I should have set this up. Oh, well. Um, so what happens next is, uh, you know, Evan Bourne comes out for his um, match, which I, I forgot to say, this, you know, uh, along with the UCS title match, uh, she also said that, you know, Evan would have a chance to be entered into Money in the Bank this year against a mystery opponent. So Evan Bourne comes out and then, you know, da -na 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 -na, or however that, you know, cult personality hits and out comes CM Punk returning for the first time since WrestleMania, as a crowd, you know, hits, does, does a mixed pop, as, you know, it is CM Punk, so, and he's really over, but he's still a heel. Um, Paul Heyman is not with him, I forgot to take him off as manager, and so, you know, big pop as Punk comes out, as it gets to 74, and in our, you know, match main event of the evening, and I've had great heat and good wrestling, CM Punk defeated Evan Bourne in 1352 by pinfall to go to sleep, this gets a 75 overall, I mean, I'm sure they had a raw match at some point so I was just thinking of that match but you know Evan Bore does high flying stuff Punk you know does his you know kicking with that kick kicking uh submission style stuff suplexes a little bit of brawling uh but the end then comes you know as you expect Bourne goes up top uh but P Punk catches him go to sleep good night one two three big victory for CM Punk as now he is also in Money in the Bank along with Diana Bryan as CM Punk gets an 81 Evan Bourne gets a 54 and big win for CM Punk as he takes the mic and says that he's here to do two things. Win money in the bank and prove he's best in the world once again. Because after what happened at WrestleMania, he had to go back home and think about his future in the WWE. But after seeing what's happening the past few months, it's only intensified the reality that he is the best in the world, and there is nobody in this business better than him. And then Punk walks away, which, again, gets a mixed pop because, like, he didn't attack anybody, uh, but he also is still the same cocky Punk as this gets an 86. So then, uh, for our final segment of the night, uh, Randy Orton comes out, you know, and calls out Vince. Uh, Vince comes down to the ring, you know, basically says, what the hell do you want? And Orton lays it out, you know, that it's, you know, that he was this close to defeating Cena at Payback, and if he doesn't get a rematch against Cena, you know, he deserves a rematch against Cena uh, or a match against Ziggler for the World Heavyweight title because Ziggler came down and got involved at the end of Payback because uh, he's the Viper. He's just as much a part of the success as Raw as anybody else on this, on this roster. And if not, well, he'll just have to cause chaos until he gets what he wants. Mr. Ring has, you know, he doesn't, you know, he, he doesn't negotiate, but you have given him an idea. So, at Payback, or at Money in the Bank, it will still be John Cena versus Dolph Ziggler, but it'll be John Cena versus Dolph Ziggler versus Randy Orton, where if Randy Orton can pin either Cena or Ziggler, they, he wins that, that championship, but and and mcmahon takes you know makes this obvious if you get pinned by either man 
you lose your chance to ever face that man for that championship, as long as he has the title. Orton agrees and says that's not going to be a problem. So there you go. Our actual main event is modify booking. It's actually a three way. God. Yes, that's fine. And so the show itself finishes with an 82. I mean, not our best show, but a solid post uh, pay-per-view Raw. And setting up a couple of things, including the, you know, Money in the Bank, the return of CM Punk, and some other fun stuff. Uh, let's see if there's any interesting mail, and then we'll go ahead and go to SmackDown. Okay, let's see here. You, I mean, there. And I, uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Smackdown tonight. And so I'll be back in just a second with that. All right, it's now time for Smackdown. We got a post, you know, pay per view edition as Rico Rodriguez introduces. The man who should be world champion, at least according to him, Alberto Duro, to the show. And he says, yes, it's true that, you know, just maybe the contract said, I don't get a rematch for my World Heavyweight title. But the general manager can always overrule that. So he calls up Booker T to overrule that. Booker says, Sucka, you agreed to the match. But if you want something, if you want an opportunity to get that title back, there's only one way to do that. Money in the bank. But I'm not going to just put you in the bank. You got to earn your way. And you got to earn your way in a big way, Saka. So at tonight on SmackDown, the main event's going to be you, Alberto Rio versus The Big Show. Pop for that as Dario, of course, is upset. And he says it is his destiny to become world champion again. So you have to give Bass that, that hump of goo Big Show. Fine, I'll do it. 70, decent opening as we move forward. As you put over that there's another Money in the Mic uh, qualifier tonight, as will be Jack Swagger versus Justin Gabriel in a, you know, big qualifying match as that gets a 43. And we move forward to our opening match as uh, the Usos get a big win, well, solid win over Primo Nakamo on SmackDown in 640 when Jamie Uso pins Primo Colon. Primo Colon with a double super hit. This gets, this gets a 52. A decent little tag team match. You know, Primo and Epico get their spots. But this is mostly a showcase to put the Usos over as they get a 53 piece. Uh, Primo gets a 43. Epico gets a 40. And, you know, a solid win for the Usos as they go over. I forgot to take uh, Rosa Mendez off as their as Primo and Epico's manager, but not the end of the world or anything. And post match, they celebrate to the crowd, which gets a 51. Then we go backstage, Rolf Dolph, Dolph Ziggler is of course celebrating his, you know, uh, championship uh, win, you know, his championship defense at, at payback, but in comes Wade Barrett with the Intercontinental title, you know, Ziggler sort of ignores him, and Barrett says, I'm right here, and Dolph says, yes, okay, and, well, you have to remember, SmackDown is my show now, I'm the Intercontinental Champion, I made another defense. So, I have to recognize I'm the true champion on this brand right now. And later tonight, you'll see an example why, because I'm a fighting champion while well, you're here sitting in the back. And they're just like, I just was on pay per view. I defended the title. I have a match against Cena. What the hell are you talking about? And Food Bear says, Yes, but what are you doing here on SmackDown? On what's supposed to be your show? And then Bear walks away as this gets an 82. Decent little segment to sort of like, you know, push. Barrett and, you know, have Ziggler on TV since he's not doing anything at the moment. Uh, then we have, you know, the Raw Rebound featuring the setup for, of course, the Money in the Bank three-way involving Cena, Orton, and Ziggler. Then we have a extremely short match as Natty defeats Oksana in 350 by submission. This gets a 41. Oksana gets a 41. Natty gets a 52. And yeah, this is just a straight-head squash for Natty. You know, I mean, nothing, nothing special about this. This is just a straight-head win. For Nightheart, and she celebrates afterwards to a 53. So there you go. 
Again, it's the 2013 Wimps Division. What can you do? Then we have a uh, big segment as Jericho and Big Show are back together. You know, Jericho says, you know, tonight, you know, Big Show is going to prove that pathetic little slime out Puerto de Rio, why he's the largest athlete in professional wrestling, and walk right into that Money in the Bank match. But of course, we have something else to talk about, and that's the Shield. You see, they can talk about being the greatest tag team of all time, but they've never faced Jericho. So, if they've got the ponies to face the truly one of the greatest tech teams in WWE history, then they can take them on on SmackDown or any other time they want to come into our, their yard. And then, of course, that has the shield come out and basically like surface around the ring, and you know, Ambrose takes the mic and says, if you want to fight, we can fight. But, of course, the big man there, he has a match later tonight, and, well... It just wouldn't be sporting to tear you apart three on one, Jericho. You know, Jericho's ready to fight. Uh, and there's a stare down as, you know, Jericho points at the belts. Roman holds them up and you know, just sort of shrugs and says no. And they walk away as the crowd pops as this gets a 73. Good stuff. Good stuff. And then we have a quick squash as Wade Barrett destroys Ruben Monroe in 343 by pinfall the bull hammer. Uh, this gets a 44. Wade Barrett gets a 66. Ruben Monroe, because he's a dropper, gets a 22. And yeah, this is just a showcase for Barrett. You know, Monroe gets a little bit of offense because he's a big, biggish guy. But Barrett, you know, quickly takes over and gets the win. And then he celebrates to a 68. As Andrew over, you know, another successful, impressive win for the Intercontinental Champion. Then we have a in-ring from Jack Swagger as he announced that that Justin Gabriel will be deported to his home of, and then Swagger's view says, it says South Africa here, but Justin, he doesn't look South African. And Justin says, you know, Gabriel comes out and just like drop kicks him and starts the match. And yeah, let's just ignore that segment ever happened. Okay. Yes. 60. I mean, obviously like you, you, you know, the joke there, but you know, I mean, I know Jack Swagger would make that joke. I know it would happen on SmackDown on the side period. And there you go. But let's get to the actual match. Which is a decent little match, as any of had decent action in the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Uh, Jack Swagger defeats Justin Gabriel 8 and 26 by submission with the Patriot Lock after distraction from Tyson Kidd. So, you know, Gabriel's actually looking very impressive. And it looks like he's actually going to get the shock win over Swagger, a former world champion himself, and get his in punches ticket into Money in the Bank. When Tyson Kidd comes out, and that's just enough distraction for Zachary to hit you know, a few suplexes, lock on the Patriot lock, and Jake Gabriel has nowhere to go. And so he has to submit, and Swagger is on to Money in the Bank. This gets a 53 because they didn't click. Swagger gets a 47, Gabriel gets a 46. So unfortunately they didn't click, but still a solid little match. And post-match, you know, Kid and Cesaro, Cesaro comes down with Kid to laugh at Gabriel. And, you know, after a moment, they are you know, have their back turned to Gabriel, when he just dies on with a big plancha to get a little bit of shot, you know, a little bit of revenge against the man who turned on him and the man who made him turn. As this gets a 52, it looks like this feud is not over at all. Then it's time for our main event. As now Pat about to have fantastic heat and great wrestling, Alberto Del Rio defeats the big show. In 1150, says by submission, I just forgot the market as pinfall, after interference from Roman Reigns. So, you know, back and forth match, of course, show is, you know, the you know, the one, the last shot in professional wrestling tosses Del Rio around, but Del Rio fights back, you know, with, with under, underhanded tactics. And, but, you know, it looks like show's going to get the big win and really, you know, make it so that Del Rio can't get another shot at the World Heavyweight Championship when, you know, Rico Rodriguez, you know, uh, distracts the referee, you know, actually, what happens Rico distracts the referee, Rest of the shield come down. Ref, you know, basically says, you know, tries to like, you know, chew them away. That gives Roman to come in from the other side. Spear Big Show, which just gives the real enough time to get his little get his little kick move and get the one, two, three over the Big Show and get in the money in the bank. As uh, so it gets a seventy-five, Big Show gets a seventy-three, Dora gets a seventy-three, the real gets a seventy-three, Big Show gets a seventy-five, and the match itself gets overall gets a seventy-five. And of course, post match, it is a beatdown as it's four on one as uh, you know, Big Show, you know, is, he tries to get some on revenge on Rio, but out comes the rest of the shield, and it looks like a big old attack on Big Show when, when first Chris Jericho comes out, and, but he's still, you know, 
fighting down and big pop as Daniel Bryan comes out and, you know, evens the odds, lots of kicks, you know, he explodes out and, you know, fit, you know, just gets the shield and they're able to back off as a crowd pops and three bay faces, you know, celebrate. And yeah. Forgot. Now, Andorra is now officially heal as this gets a 69. Nice. And the show itself overall gets a 73. So, I mean, you know, it's all SmackDown, so what can you do? And let's see if there's anything interesting as far as the mail here. Survey says. Loading. Gotta love the loading. All right, let's see here. Any email? Uh, not really. Okay, so that's for now. I think those were two solid, uh, two solid shows as we sort of begin the road to Money in the Bank. And but you know that's it for now. Oh, okay. I was very confused about that. Okay, that's weird. Anyway, um, not really lost my train of thought. All right. Okay. Anyway. That's for now. So if you enjoyed this, go ahead and give it a like. Comment below on what you're liking and not liking. And of course, subscribe to the channel for lots of the other TW 2020 content like this series. Uh, my MLW 2006 series heading towards the first big Univision show. My uh, WCW 1984 series heading towards Slambury with Rick Rude versus Sting for the Unified Championship. And of course, my long-running WCW 2001 series now heading towards Slambury 2004 with uh, Booker T versus Jeff Hardy for the world title and other fun stuff. And of course, you know, like I said, get the link to the Patreon down below. No pressure on anybody to sign it up, but you know, you get some nice bonuses if you do. But that's it for now, so talk to you later, and adios. Have a good one.